Hello, everybody. I'm Michael Kraus, um, Board of Ed Chairman. Um, it is uh, April 24th, and we are here for our full board meeting. Um, like I did it when we were at um, Tisco a month ago, I thought it'd be a good education for the little ones as well as the parents of really who we really are. Who, who is the Board of Education? Um, the Board of Education, normally there is nine of us. We are elected by your parents, or actually anybody over 18 years old that's a registered voter. Um, we all serve different terms. Um, and there's basically two segments of what we do. Um, and what I mean by that, we meet through committee meetings. Committee meetings are really where a lot of the, the work is done. A lot of inter-exchange between staff, uh, people, the staff, administration, and the board. And that's where a lot of discussions on certain proposals would be done is during a committee session. Then what happens is then it comes, then what is decide, what is recommended in the committees then becomes to the full board, and the board then at that point will act on that accordingly. A um, couple of other things. Um, the regular Board of Ed meetings is where um, we have the presentations like we're looking forward to tonight. Um, we also, uh, um, as I said, the regular board meeting is also a meeting of the Board of Education, which the public is invited to attend to watch the work of the board. But then what we actually do is we give an opportunity. There are two public comment periods during each regular board meeting. During the first public comment period, the board welcomes comments regarding any subject when the board's authority. The second public comment, a little later in the meeting, and I have a feeling a few of you may not be here at that point, um, is limited to the discussion action items that the board is discussing that particular night. All speakers must maintain appropriate standards of decorum. Uh, the Board of Ed is here to listen to the public uh, comments, but do not respond. So you'll find it a little strange when we get to the public comments sta station. There might be a few people that want to speak. They'll make some comments, and then we don't say anything. What the Board does is pretty much listens and makes a decision down the road of whether we're going to discuss that particular concern or topic down the road. Um, and then we allot five minutes per speaker, and we're not trying to be rude, just trying to control the length of the meeting. Basically, we will keep time on it, and then we warn that pub the speaker that we have X number of seconds or minutes left to do that. Um, the other part that's important that I think everybody uh, needs to make sure of is that there's no boisterous conduct shall be permitted at any Board of Education minute, a meeting. Persistence in boisterous conduct shall be grounds for summary termination by me if I feel it's going over the top. And no oral presentation shall include charges or compliment, uh, complaints against any employee of the Board of Education, regardless of whether or not the employee is identified in the presentation by name or another reference which leads to identify an individual. All charges or complaints against employees shall be submitted to the Board of Education under the provisions of one of our policies. Again, just a couple, I just thought it would be a good idea for the parents as well as the kids, just get a little bit of background of what we do as a board and how we conduct our meetings. Because I'm sure it does get a little strange when you don't see us talking. Um, so we are really looking forward to tonight. One of our favorite things to do is see the kids come before us, That's able to pre do presentations to like peer connectors as well as the unified sports. Um, where we can celebrate our, our children and our school system. Um, now, the next item we do is we have a motion to approve the, can I have a motion to approve the minutes from our March 20th, 2019 full Board of Ed meeting, please? So moved. Can I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Thank you both. And just so a little bit of why someone might abstain is because they weren't able to be at those the, that particular meeting. So that's why that occurs. Um, agenda changes. John? Yeah, I have two brief items that I want to include on the agenda. And just to give them a name, one is um, call it future focus. And the second item is what's called a green proposal. 
All right, and technically what happens with that is the board technically as the board votes on that to make sure that you can add it, that all are in favor to add it. So I, I move that we accept John's recommendation to add that to the agenda item and we will put it down. Um, uh, I'm going to do one which is going to be a C. We'll put yours a D and E. So is all everybody approve? Okay, opposed? Okay, thank you. And the agenda item I'm going to add is a very nice, um, a very nice donation um, that is being given to the Brantford High School scholarship, scholarship fund um, by a very, um, very, very wonderful family and of their kindness. And we'll go into that more in detail during our discussion action item. And now um, communication. Does anybody have any communication from the board? No, nope, I don't have any. And now we get to our topic of public comments. Does anybody have any public comments? Mama. Sure. Uh, a number of months ago. Uh, state your name too. Sorry. Right, right. No problem. Right. A number of months ago, a parent with a substantial background in education uh, for time, out of her busy schedule to share various uh, concerns with this board. I also have to confess that Ms. Alexander was right in saying that parents are lucky to speak out to a fear of retribution. For I am one of those I'm choosing to speak out now and only after her son has left the in my school district. Uh, due to the strong possibility for retribution by Mr. Hernandez. The truth is, Mr. Hernandez has, on multiple occasions, tried to intimidate me and acted in a manner that many associate with bullies. The most egregious of which happened uh, last March, outside of the men's room of all places at the Brantford Firehouse, after a budget meeting, some of which was also witnessed by Representative Peter Jackson who I was speaking with after he introduced himself to me that evening. Mr. Hernandez came over to us, um, and he also tried to bully and intimidate. Mr. Mr. Jerome, is this going to be, is this a complaint against one of our employees in our district? If it is, then you have to, we have to follow our policy and then you submit that into writing to the, the board, and then we will address it. This isn't a time for um, a complaining against a, an employee of our district. When did that change, Chairman Krause? Basically, we looked, I checked in the policy. It's in, in our policies, and you feel free to, you can look at that. Okay. So in other words, I mentioned that there was going to be a complaint last month that I didn't want to share because of a large population of smaller students, mm -hmm. okay, that I didn't want to give a, a broader view of exactly who and what our superintendent is, okay? And based on that, I said I was going to do it at a future meeting. No, that's not what you said, and I'm not, as again, as I said to this group, is that there is no interaction between the board and the public comments, but I have a right to, co to cut okay. it off when it goes against our bylaws. Okay, so and Ms. that's not what you said at the last okay. meeting. Your last meeting said you were going to submit your concerns to the board, and that's what your exact words were. Right. Thank you for correcting me. And I didn't do that because I brought up some concerns about the nature of the minutes and how the minutes are categorically inaccurate. <coughs> I asked for some response, didn't get any, so I didn't offer any. And rather I'm coming here today with which to share a concern. Um, of which a big part of what this board does by its mission statement is oversee our superintendent. Mm -hmm. So I find it interesting, Chairman Krause, okay, that all of a sudden here's a, you know, here's a new rule, okay? <laughs> Why don't we just, let's just kind of keep moving the goalposts, okay, so as it meets your convenience, okay? That's not the way to run a board, sir. Okay. But that said, I will certainly comply. And with regard to what was mentioned uh, last month, with regard to uh, regard to how 
public comments that are fact in nature, that are um, logical conclusion in nature, being categorically described in the minutes as opinion. I'd like to understand the thought process behind how such an esteemed group of experienced board members and educators can come to such a factually inaccurate conclusion. You have emailed, I appreciate that. You are speaking around the issue. And I would appreciate a response that is on point. It's like I'm asking you what time it is, and you're telling me how to take a watch apart and put it back together. It speaks around the issue, not to the issue. And I would appreciate a response to that, and you could count on a response with regard to this issue. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. All right, are any other speakers, please? Okay, thank you. All right, now we get to another good part of our meeting. Is the We're gonna start with the, because we know some, our, some of our um, members of our Unified Sports team may still be at some activity, so we're gonna give them a little more time. So we're gonna start with the BHS uh, Peer Connection Club. Thank you, Mr. Krauss. Um, before I call Cheryl Clace up, uh, as well as the peer connections, I do want to speak a little bit about the work that they, that they did at Brantford High School. Some of you may have witnessed uh, and observed on Channel 8 a few months ago that the high school was featured. And the reason that they were featured is when the students arrived at school, each student, the peer connectors, had written an actual positive note to each student in the high school and put it on a post-it. Not only did they do that, but they do a variety of things throughout the year which raise the climate of the high school and create a community of learners. And that type of initiative, that type of leadership, um, is the type of leadership that we need desperately uh, for our young people to embrace and to do on a daily, daily basis. And I cannot be prouder, particularly when you think about high school students that are incredibly busy taking time to really encourage their peers. Um, and it's because where they are in their life sometimes, they may be thinking um, maybe about themselves a little bit more than others. Um, and I will tell you that this generation of children, uh, of high school students, is incredibly, incredibly well adapted at caring for others, much more so than I know my own generation was. And I applaud you for that. And I hope, encourage you to continue to do that because together you will make a difference. So congratulations. Cheryl, if you can please come on up. The, uh, whoa. <laughs> How proud I was as a chairman of, of students who took the initiative to, to welcome back their peers, their teachers. I mean, they didn't have to do that. I mean, they had to get up at the crack of dawn or whenever they had to do it, to do it when they know their own, they have their own schoolwork to do, they have chores at home, hopefully. They got sports going on, other recreational things, and to take the time to make another student or human, just say, to feel good with what has gone on today and what's been happening a lot in our world today, that just shows us that we still have some good in our world, and especially with our students. So again, I really do appreciate that, and thank you. Now the official stuff. Whereas the Branford Board of Education and Superintendent Schools would like to recognize the Branford High School Peer Connections Club for the support and kindness that they show others, whereas the Branford High School Peer Connection Club has devoted their time and attention to support a positive school climate at Branford High School. 
resolved that the Brantford Board of Education and the Superintendent of School salutes the Brantford High School Peer Connection Club members, commends and thanks them for their commitment and dedication to support and encourage students at Brantford High School and hereby spreads the resolution upon the minutes of April 24th, 2019, Brantford Board of Education meeting. And again, thank you. Thank Here you. you go. Okay, not all of not all um, 38 members were available to be here tonight. So I'll just say the names of all the members so that they get publicly recognized. Uh, James Quinn Raymond, unable to be here. Sophia DeSorbo was supposed to be here. Put those. Okay, thank you. Dylan Royka is um, participating in a band <laughs> rehearsal. I know that tonight. Eddie Salta also wanted to be here. I spoke with a lot of these students today. Uh, Huda Shraki. <laughs> Thanks, Huda. You stand right there. Thank you. Uh, Tanisha Perez, unable to be here. Senna Abenoise. <laughs> Carlos Amato, Thank you. unable to be here. Maeve Bacamayello, unable to be here tonight. Victoria Enriquez. <laughs> Thank you. Michaela Jean Lununas, unable to be here. C.J. Doyle, not able to be here. Mariana McCautry. This is actually, um, I just wanted to recognize, this is Madison Meehan Wright's actual idea, and I wanted to make sure she's unable to be here tonight, but to really recognize that this was her thought on um, bringing this idea to Brantford High School. Thank you. Uh, Kennedy Parks, unable to be here, unfortunately. Nuala Padwala. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Brandon Perez, unable to be here. Yeah, we do have a lot of kids. Uh, Daniel uh, DeSorbo O'Brien, unable to be here. Alyssa Hackley. Thank you, Alyssa. Uh, jo uh, Joshua Josephi Zach. Mia Josephi Zach. Pierce Koz Kozwalski. Thank you. Ashlisha Ashlisa Lama. <laughs> uh, Jillian Charleglio, unable to be here. Abigail Boyle, unable to be here. Juliana Clark Dixon, also unable to be here. Isabella Crest de Guzman. <laughs> Ashley Duong, not able to be here. Uh, Bridget Smested. Ariana Rivera. Hilla, Hilla's, um, I should note, Swarnair. Say your last name. Sinere. <laughs> Thank you, Hilla. Sam Tabor. Aldina Aksamoka, she's unable to be in, she's actually in, in another country, she's in a really great spot. Uh, Noor Issa. Uh, Sullivan Bono and Justin Dombrowski. 
Veronica Smith, Alex Warfield, Bennett Taft, uh, Nami Bolat. I just wanted to um, also just quickly, we do have, as I mentioned, 38 people um, on our peer connectors. In addition to doing the activities that we talked about, I just wanted to highlight that many of our members are also mentors to other students, um, as well as tutors. And we are trying to set up a program where new students to Brantford High School get introduced to one of our peer connectors so that they immediately have a connection and maybe be able to eat lunch and make sure they get to their bus at the end of the day. So these are just a few of the things that our peer connectors do in addition to trying to promote uh, larger community activities such as the um, Post-it um, project. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> sports team at Brantford High School. Unified Sports is a combination of students that work together and some of our students have disabilities and they work with our general education students that do not have disabilities and I can tell you that if you've ever been to a unified sporting event uh, it is incredibly moving. Something that really st stuck out in my mind this year is during a wrestling match where we had actually, and it was, it was an incredibly powerful moment. It was Brantford High School against Guilford. And at the end of the wrestling match, the student uh, from Guilford raised the hand of the Brantford High School student. Uh, Mr. Panagulius <laughs> tweeted it out because Brantford High School is cutting edge and they have a Twitter account. Um, <laughs> and I can tell you that that was followed tremendously. And it's really a testimony to what we do at Brantford High School where every child is, a, is valuable and every child brings something to the school community that we cherish. And for that, we recognize them as well as the program itself has received recognition by the state, both the high school and the intermediate school program this year in Unified Sports has received state recognition. And I think that is something that as a community we should embrace because all of our children have gifts and for us to be able to recognize them and to celebrate them is truly a blessing. So with that, we're going to recognize the Unified Sports. Unified sports team, coaches and players for their hard work, dedication, and devotion. And whereas the Brantford High School Unified Sports coaches and players have devoted their time and attention to further the athletic endeavors of the Brantford High School Unified Sports program. 
Resolved that the Brantford Board of Education and the Superintendent of School salutes the Brantford High School Unified Sports coaches and players, commends and thanks them for their commitment and dedication, and hereby spreads this resolution upon the minutes of April 24th, 2019, Brantford Board of Education meeting. Congratulations. Thank you. the hard job. Here, I'll hold that for you. Thank you. Here you go. Hi, my name is Chelsea. I've been a captain for four years now, and I, I'm a team player, and I really love it. Now, here is our first one. Ela Miguel McLucky. She is not here today, unfortunately, but I wish her good luck. Lily Moraki, she's not here neither. I wish she could be here. Yandel Morales, she's not here. I wish she was here. M Malene, Melanie Sachs, I wish she could be here as well. I wish she very really good luck. We got busy kids, that's why. Mm -hmm. Yes. AJ Chirelli, I wish Chirelli, I wish he was here. Julian Robinson, I wish she was here. Cooper Robinson, I wish she was here, but she's not. Brianna. Brianna. Donovan, Lossie, I wish she could be here. Elliot Vendry, I wish he was here too. Tyler Jones, I wish he was here. He's at work. <laughs> Ryan Hopkins, he's at spin class. <laughs> Better to be there than here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Olivia Handy, I wish you could be here. Jeremy Trendrelli, I wish he was here. Emily Rosenberg, I wish she was here. Chelsea Qualiano, this is me. Oh. So we got it, right? Yes. <laughs> Maximilian Dewan, I wish he was here. Masha, uh, no. Arpena Manji. Arpena Manji, I wish the best look. Sarah Burden. Sarah Burden, I wish he was here. Walter, Walter Brunner! <laughs> Caden Lyons. Caden Lyons, I wish she was here. LeJohn Lesane, I wish he was here. Samara Alaska, I wish he was here. Jeremiah Newton, I wish he was here. Hernan Portilla, I wish he was here. Brooke Leary, O'Leary, I wish he was here. Mm -hmm. Abigail Robinson, I wish she was here. Ma Ma Maria Marciani, I wish she was here. But her real name is Masha. <laughs> yes. And Abba Mills, I wish she was here. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and a night.
Kill, kill, come on, you're going to get in the picture. <laughs> awesome job. <laughs> Presentation to the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm looking We're all to here. <laughs> We're all here. And, I, and I'm looking forward to hearing this uh, presentation, the John B. Sliney School Writing Workshop called Greenbelt. Introduce. Thank you, Mr. Krauss. Um, as part of um, what the board has decided to do this year is to have the students in their their teachers showcase something that they are working on in their school. Uh, this evening, we have um, a wonderful opportunity to see the Sliney writers um, and the teachers that have been working with the students. And I am going to turn it over to Sharon Wearsman for introductions. And before I do that, I just want to tell the students how incredibly proud we are of all of the hard work that you have That's put into this presentation. You are very, very powerful role models for all of us. So have fun doing this. And Ms. Wiersman, if you'll do the honors. Thank you, thank you. We're bursting with anticipation here. <laughs> uh, and we thank you very much for this opportunity to share some of the great work being done in our classrooms at JBS by our students and our teachers and our coaches. And tonight we'd like to turn your focus uh, uh, to our writer's workshop and one exciting strategy that we use within the model. It's called Greenbelt Writing, and we will explain that as we go on. This strategy provides students with choice of the type of writing they do, and it thoroughly engages them in a very creative way. As you'll see, it's very much aligned with our district goals and it supports our global learning competencies of collaboration and learning uh, to be effective communicators. I think you're going to recognize the same energy in this approach to writing as I have seen in our classrooms. To share our work this evening, we have representatives from grade one and grade two, way over there. Uh, we have uh, from grade one, Mrs. Nancy Hobbs and her students, Ryland Dwyer and Logan Heath. From grade two, we have Mrs. Melissa Kane and her students, Sebastian Kunst and Callie Hoogland. And with grade two, we have our pre-K through grade two English language arts coach, Ms. Mrs. Kathy Miller. And Kathy worked especially hard to help uh, bring this presentation to fruition, so we thank her for that. And with that, Mrs. Kane will get us started. Okay, thank you for having us tonight. Uh, as you may know, a green belt in a community is an invisible border that creates a passageway for species to move from one habitat to another. And it exists adjacent to, but separate from, uh, the developed communities. And so Greenbelt writing is a metaphor for a time within our writer's workshop uh, that provides a spark for students to really find their stride as writers. Uh, during our writer's workshop, students learn uh, and practice strategies 
that strengthen themselves as writers. And then the Greenbelt writing within the workshop is an opportunity for students. We're gonna sit over there. We're gonna sit over there so we can see. Just we want to see it. So sure. We'll, yeah. We'll, sure. We're gonna go there. Okay. strategies uh, to strengthen themselves as writers and Greenbelt writing within the workshop is an opportunity for students to apply and strengthen um, and to apply these same strategies on their own personal projects and this opportunity for transference of strategies is what uh, we writing teachers are really excited for and really hope for and hope to see in our students. So every day in a typical writing workshop, it lasts about one hour, the teachers teach a mini lesson for the first 10 to 15 minutes. And in that mini lesson, they present a strategy to the students. They give them an opportunity to try that strategy out. And then students go off and work on their writing pieces. Depending on what genre or what the unit uh, genre is for that unit, the students will work on pieces within that genre. So in informational unit, the students are writing informational pieces, and in fiction unit, so on. So um, during the writing time, the independent writing time, which lasts about 40 minutes, um, students will be working on uh, writing within that genre. And they'll be applying the strategies that they learned that day or days prior. During the independent time, the teacher's role is to go ahead and coach into the, um, the work that the students are doing one by one individually called in, during um, what we call a conference. And the teacher will listen in and listen to the students read their piece and help them along with coaching and nudging them along with what, right in their zone of proximal development to move them along on, the, on their trajectory. Um, and then the final part of workshop is when the teachers and the students all come together as a community of writers and they go ahead and do what's called the share. And that lasts about five minutes. This structure that I just explained is exactly the same every day. And it's also the same on Greenbelt writing days. There is no difference. The only difference that there is is that there's an expanded amount of choice across multiple genres. So of course there's choice every day. As a writer, you make decisions about vocabulary and about um, length of a piece, or, but during a unit, you're usually writing within that genre. On Greenbelt Writing Days, which many of our teachers go ahead and, and use the strategy on a Friday, students are allowed to work on any personal piece that they want. And as you'll see later, um, we've got examples of some of the products that have come out of this process. Um, so Greenbelt Writing basically is an opportunity for our children to have a bit more freedom and to tinker with words and to play a little bit with um, their writing. And that freedom, as you'll see a little later, and we'll talk about a little more later, has really um, breathed some really lovely new life into the whole writing process and the writing workshop. So it's something that they look forward to. Um, again, what happens during Greenbelt writing, on a Greenbelt writing day, is no different structurally. Um, and the students are applying all of the strategies that they've been learning across the year. Um, so if we're in, right now we're in a nonfiction unit, students might apply some fiction strategies that they learned from the beginning of the year. So there's, it really lends itself to um, transference. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. But the most important part is for our students to have a chance to talk to you about the things that they've done in, in Greenbelt Writing. So at this point, we're going to hear from our teachers and Mrs. Hobbs and her um, two students from first grade are going to share a little bit about their experience with Greenbelt. During a Greenbelt writing session, you can see a variety of things going on. We have writers that are experimenting with words, trying out new ideas, or even trying different genres. 
They can write alone or they can collaborate with others. You also might see some mentoring going on. We've had students from other grades come in and mentor in our classroom. We've also had students be able to work with other school personnel. As you'll see in some of the slides, we have two poets in the upper left-hand corner that decided to sit together and work on their poems. We also have in the lower left two um, writers that are quite interested in dinosaurs that were working together to illustrate and write an informational book on dinosaurs. In the middle is a picture of our second grade mentor author who came in to help us with the project. We also have in the upper right a friend ready to share a published piece. And we have kids, as they do every day, using resources in the room to elaborate and add detail to their written pieces. And I'm lucky enough to have two of my authors with me tonight. So I'd like to pass the mic to them. No, Logan, you go first. No, Logan, you go first. I am Rylan. And I am Logan. We are in Mrs. Hobbs' first grade class. We'd like to share our important book with you this evening. We work hard together. Greenbelt days, Mrs. Miller read the book, the important book, by Margaret Y. Brown. She asked us to listen and follow along with, with writer's eyes, thinking like a writer. Then she said we could try out some of the Margaret's writing moves in our own writing by making a book just like hers in a topic we love. Rylan and I decided to give it a try. This is our book. They're all the same, each one for each of you. They have a copy of it. Let's see. So I'm passing out a copy of. Six. A colossal Here's an example. Here's the thing about this one. You could go ahead, Tom. A colossal squid is it has one eye as big as a pizza box. It's <laughs> pinky red for colors. It mostly lives in the deep water. It has a big brain, but the important thing about a colossal squid is it has one eye as big as a pizza box. So I shared a copy of the book that Logan and Ryan uh, and Rylan worked so hard on. Um, you can see the piece about the colossal squid that they just read. And they fashioned the, um, the writing that they did around the mentor text that I passed around originally, which is The Important Book by Margaret Wise Brown. You get to keep those copies and you can have them signed later because the authors are in our presence. <laughs> Do you mind signing, boys? They would no. like to. You, yeah. Okay. I, they would like to. Perfect. So as you can see, Greenbelt writing naturally aligns with our global learning competencies. It affords our students opportunities for agency and choice, and it sets our students up to be self-directed learners and effective communicators and collaborators. These are the core ideas upon which Greenbelt writing is built. And at this point, we're going to hear from Mrs. Kane and her second graders. Okay, so I have uh, Sebastian and Callie, and they're both going to introduce themselves and then share um, videos of their Greenbelt writing pieces. You ready, Cal? Ready, Cal? Good evening. I'm Callie, and I'm in Mrs. Kane's second grade class. And I would like to share the process by which I wrote a song and how I collaborated with Mr. Samadel. So, Mr. Samadel is our uh, music teacher here in the building. After I wrote 
after I wrote the song during writer's workshop, I asked Mr. Sandow to help me put music to my words. He recorded me singing my song. Next, we put a drum beat to the tune. After that, we recorded the drum beat I liked the most. That was done. We merged the drum recording with my singing recording. Mr. Samadel showed me how to make it all come together using special computer software. And now we have Sebastian. He's going to uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Good. Good evening. My name is Sebastian, and, and I am a student in Mrs. Kane's second grade class. One of my Green Belt writing projects was creating a new version of Diary of a Wimpy Kid by Jeff Kenny. My version of Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Robot Attack, here is my story. Mr. Dorma, he, he writes children books and illustrates books for other authors. He with me each week to teach me some illustration types that, that I can use in, in my book. On, on this day, he was teaching me about creating negative space when, when I illustrated. Yes, yes, we can pass them down if you want. So you can see the Miss student. Miss Kim loved my book so much. <laughs> Go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry. So much that he decided to use it as a read aloud and share it with my whole class. They loved it too and, and asked if I could conference with them and teach them some of my craft moves. So as you can see, as you can see, Greenbelt writing is a time for kids to tinker with ideas and words and genres. <laughs> the low stakes nature of Greenbelt writing provides a platform for our most reluctant writers to rise up and identify themselves as writers, all within the workshop structure. It is personal. It's passionate, it's joyful, and it creates an authentic path for transfer. And we hope you've enjoyed our evening, and I hope you see that we've captured the joy of um, choice in Writer's Workshop this evening. And if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. No, we're ready for questions. Will you be by to take? Maybe reading and research instead of writing some more. Oh, well. You want more writing? Is that what I heard well, you say? Well, I always just said one of, the, one of the reasons that the board um, several months ago decided to do this is so that we could showcase our our children and especially our youngest ones. They don't get a lot of chances to do that, and and when I see their their beady eyes today and their it's just amazing what our kids are doing. I mean, first grade and second grade, mm -hmm. and yours, I'm gonna lose my job, because you guys are very articulate for your age. What you don't realize what you're already doing is stuff when we were younger. Um, we didn't, you're doing public speaking now, and you don't know how important that is gonna be when you get older. Um, True. When I was 18, a few years ago, um, that's when we started having public speaking classes or courses and you're getting that opportunity already and to be able to speak in front of your class uh, about your books 
um, that's just marvelous. It is just, and I'm really, really proud of you guys and, and your other siblings that are here tonight to put up with us for an hour <laughs> and, and, sh and show your thing, to show you us your accomplishments with your writing. And again, I really want to thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to open it up to the board. Any other questions? Dawn? Um, I love how you worked with the other teachers in the building, the music and the art, and you, such a collaboration and such a great way for you guys to express your creativeness. Creativity? Creativity. <laughs> Thank you to all the teachers. This is great. And the other part, too, before I turn it back over, I was, I was looking at one of the books we saw, and the, the handwriting um, for, for, I think this was the first graders, first uh, Logan uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Ryland. Um, I mean, amazing. First grade, and I can read it. Um, and today, writing, I was telling a couple Thank of people you. in my office today, they don't know how to write. Um, and so that's another art that I'm hoping you guys can keep up. I'd still like to get script back into mm -hmm. the education, but I don't think that's going to happen. The, uh, anyway, anybody else? That's I, I just would love to ask you guys what your favorite kind of thing to write is. Do you like writing informational stuff or creative stuff? What's your favorite, each of you? Can you tell me your favorite? I think creative. 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 Great job with your informational. Yeah. What do you like to write? Um, informational. Creative. <laughs> Callie's actually going to be singing her song at one of our town meetings once it's totally complete with Mr. Sam. But well, she wanted to do it with the music, and so. But we'll send an invitation yeah. and you should come to our for town our town meeting. meeting. Mm -hmm. again, again, I want to thank you all for coming. And Hamlet, want to sing? Yes, I, I just want to congratulate all the students, but I also want to take a moment to thank the teachers yeah. for the for their incredible work that they do with our students and how they have embraced the workshop model and they have taken it really to a level that we could not have imagined. And what we see today is students excited and engaged in their learning. And that really, really is exciting. And I hope that all of you continue to keep that passion as you go through the grades. Uh, we can learn from you. So thank you, have a great night. Uh, try to carve out a deal for ice cream, as I mentioned to all four of you. And, um, and you need to go home and read your books, but have some ice cream first. But here, quick picture though, first, guys. First, take a picture. Okay, picture. And then you have to sign the book. Oh, yeah. Come on up. Come on up.
writer in 20 years, this is going to be worth millions. Continue, or we've been rolling, right? Oh, great. All right. Now we're up to our students' report. Ria, please. All right. So about 58 concert choir members spent spring break performing in various places in San Francisco and in the arena at Disneyland, so in California. They also participated in a workshop where they were taught two songs by professional choir members in Disney. This included their voices being dubbed over the movies the songs are from, which were Frozen and Nightmare Before Christmas. And I have to say, like watching them perform in a cathedral in San Francisco with like beautiful acoustics, it was inspirational, and I'm in concert choir. This week is also Diversity Week. The high school is celebrating diversity by playing songs from different places around the world. On Monday, the song was from Nepal, my home country. On Tuesday, France. Today, South Korea. Tomorrow will be a Spanish song, and Friday, Hindi. Tomorrow will also be our annual Parade of Nations. Every flag will be represented by students around the school in an assembly in the gym. And the blood drive will be taking place on May 6, organized by Student Council. And finally, the BHS Excel Club has been sponsoring Believe in the Blue Child, uh, Child Abuse Prevention Month. They have been asking students and faculty to donate items for emergency totes that will, that will be distributed by the Branf uh, Branford Cal Counseling Center and the police and fire department for children who have to leave their homes without notice. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. The, all right, now we're to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Krauss. Um, my report is uh, rather short this evening. Thank you. Uh, I'll start Thank off, you. I'll blend both the superintendent's report as well as the WIS uh, construction project. And I'll start off with the construction project. The, we have received our second uh, reimbursement payment, and we will now be making our third application. Mr. Neal is uh, instrumental in working with both the state, the town, and myself in ensuring that uh, that process runs smoothly. We are always up against uh, different changing conditions at the state level, but I'm happy to report that uh, we are, we continue to receive our reimbursement payments. I also would like to report that uh, the furniture, fixture, and equipment meeting that we had at the state uh, in the back, uh, he's always behind, literally behind the scenes. And Mr. Tom uh, Paisani, he uh, represented the district for the technology portion at the state, uh, and something took place that really ever happens. They accepted the package at the first time on the spot. So, that is something that typically is done by a consultant. Uh, 
and we had the in-house capacity and as a result of that we really have um, the technology piece of the FFNE really tailored and integrated into what we are currently doing so we're very fortunate to be able to do that. I also would like to report that uh, we have completed our final interviews for the JBS uh, next principal uh, and we are in the process of deliberating and we will shortly be making a formal announcement of who we will be recommending. Um, that notification, obviously, uh, we need to be mindful of how we do that. Uh, and I've asked Mr. Krause this evening uh, if uh, the board would consider having a special board meeting in the near future. And tomorrow we'll send out a doodle poll so people can check their availability. Uh, but we're very, very excited. The two uh, finalists were truly outstanding candidates, so we, we're in a very, very good place uh, with that. Also, I would just remind um, the board that our final budget uh, hearing is May 14th, I want to say. I want to just double check that. Um, May 14th, Tuesday. May 14th, that is where we will learn of our final appropriation for FY20. Uh, up to this point, um, it appears as if uh, there is good support for the budget. Um, Mr. Neal, uh, Ms. Sexton, as well as Mr. Kraus, they all went uh, to the presentation on Monday, of, a few weeks ago, I believe, where it was presented to the subcommittee, uh, the education subcommittee, uh, both the operating as well as the capital. Also, I'd like to uh, report that all of our fire crisis drills for the month of March were completed. Uh, we continue to do that. And now that we have a new police chief in town, I've already reached out to him and we will be meeting shortly uh, to start reviewing plans and make sure that we have a seamless transition from one police chief to the next police chief. Um, and lastly, I'd like to report that in the seal of biliteracy, we will have three seniors from Brantford High School that have, will, or, that have earned their seal of biliteracy. The three students that have earned that uh, are also graduates of the ELL program. So they've actually exited out of the ELL program um, and they have let, reached a level of proficiency in both languages. Uh, where they will receive that seal of biliteracy. And in May, uh, both uh, Rachel and myself will be presenting on uh, the new accountability measures. Uh, they're not new anymore, but the accountability index, uh, which is really how we did from a growth perspective, uh, as well as uh, all of the indicators that the state has. And we will also be reporting on the SAT scores of the high school which on balance, uh, we just received those. We're in the process of analyzing those, but we made good gains um, in both areas that are tested um, from compared to last year. So we're very, very pleased about that. And that is it, Mr. Right. Krause. Thank you. Any questions? All right, thank you, sir. All right, now we're going right into uh, the discussion action item. Uh, the first item is the healthy food certification. Do you want to just give just an overall what that what that's about? Yes. Then I'll, then I'll do the motion. Yes. The healthy food certification is, a, is something that uh, I think is best suited for Mr. Neal to talk about, but essentially it's an opportunity. We make a commitment to do X, and the state makes a commitment to give us Y. But I'll let Mr. Neal talk about the X and the Y. Sure. The superintendent did a, a very good job describing it. Um, we've participated in the Healthy Food Certification Program for, for several years. Um, in doing so, we commit to selling to students uh, only foods that meet the state's established nutritional standards. Um, in return, we get an additional subsidy for the school lunch program. Um, you have three motions in front of you. The first one is mandatory. And for all districts who participate in uh, the National School Lunch Program in Connecticut. And that basically says whether we will or will not participate in the program. And we've, of course, recommend that you do. Uh, that brought us about $18,000 of extra money last year. Um, the other two are optional, and I also recommend that you adopt them. They provide us with some flexibility. Uh, there are basically waivers to the program that are allowed by the state. And there's one for food and one for beverages, but basically what it says is 
after school and on days where we don't have school, like weekends, um, at events, uh, we can we can sell foods that are not compliant with the nutritional standards. So uh, it doesn't apply to uh, rehearsals and practices, but an actual event where a spectator, you know, where we would expect spectators, like games and, and uh, drama productions. Um, so if you have any questions, we'd be happy to, happy to answer them. Great, thank you. All right, then I'm gonna, um, we're gonna, we have to do each one individually. Um, so I move, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Don, would, I didn't quite catch the dollar amount that we got back, did you say eight? 18. 18, yes. Thank you. Yeah. I apologize, the motions are rather wordy, but they're scripted by the state, they need to be done exactly as the state wants them. I better wear these, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I move the pursuant to the CGS section 10-215F, the Board of Education certifies that all food items offered for sale to students in the schools under its jurisdiction and not exempted from the Connecticut Nutrition Standards published by the Connecticut State Department of Education will comply with the Connecticut Nutrition Standards during the period of July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. This certification shall include all food offered for sale to students separately from reimbursable meals at all times and from all sources, including, but not limited to, school stores, vending machines, school cafeterias, and any fundraising activities on school premises sponsored by the school or by non-school organizations and groups. Can I have a second? All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Good to take care of that one. Sorry. All right, food exemptions. Um, board of Educa I move the Board of Education will allow the sale to students of food items that do not meet the Connecticut nutrition standards provided that the following conditions are met. The sale is in connection with an event occurring after the end of regular school day or on the, on the weekend. The sale is at the location of the event and the food items are not sold from a vending machine or school store. An event is an occurrence that involves more than just a regularly scheduled practice, meeting, or extracurricular activity. For example, soccer games, school plays, and interscholastic debates are events, but soccer practices, play rehearsals, and debate team meetings are not. The regular school day is the period from midnight before four to 30 minutes after the end of the official school day. Location means where the event is being held. Can I have a second? second. Discussion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, abstain. Thank you. The beverage exemption. The Board of Education will allow to, well I better say, I move, the Board of Education will allow the sale to students of beverages not listed in Section 10-221Q of the Connecticut General Statutes provided the following conditions are met. The sale is in connection with an event occurring after the end of the regular school day or on the weekend. The sale is at the location of the event and the beverages are not sold from a vending machine or school store. An event is an occurrence that involves more than just a regularly scheduled practice, meeting, or extracurricular activity. The school day is the period from midnight before to 30 minutes after the end of the official school day. Location means where the event is being held and must be the same place as the beverage sales. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? We're good. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Thank you, Don. <laughs> All right, the next item is uh, project graduation, um, and it became a practice of the board several, several years ago. Mm -hmm. um, Don may have been one of the first ones that brought this to it's us. It's the first time I ever met Don on the yeah. phone, talking the, about project graduation. <laughs> <laughs> where we contribute, the board contributes approximately $10 uh, per grade 12 student. We have 226 students. Um, so I move approval of $2,260 Board of Ed donation to project graduation. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Well worth it. Well worth the money. 
All right, then um, I have a donation um, that I added to the, to the agenda, as I mentioned in the beginning of the meeting. And I just got to find my notes, please. All right. Um, a Brantford resident, Teresa Barbu uh, Barbuto, passed away, and she left a portion of her estate um, to the Brantford High School Scholarship Fund and is actually donating $9,704.12 to the scholarship fund. And so it's wonderful. Can I have a second? Any discussion? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. So $9,000, is that to be dispersed in increments or is that to go into a sort of self-perpetuating um, kind of a fund that accrues interest and that builds so that it's always there? Do we know? <clears throat> Don, you want to? So. The donor's wishes weren't specified, but typically uh, it is, as you describe, it's invested and then um, uh, a portion is, is given out to each year. That's great. Thank you, Don. Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. And, th and thank you um, to the family as well. Um, all right, John, uh, uh, future focus? So I have a couple items. One of them is the future focus. Um, as a board, we have, uh, as a district, we've been doing some extraordinary things on the process of education. Instructional coaches, restorative practices, um, purposeful play, uh, making real progress. We also have the opportunity, which I think we don't take advantage of that often, of taking the lead on some things that are related, let's say. And so I'm submitting that we don't stop any of those things. This should not get in the way of that, and I'm just doing this as a kind of a preface. Um, but so my first proposal, and this is not, I do not have any expectation that we're going to act fully on this tonight and approve it as is. This is for future discussion. And um, just in the sort of uh, full disclosure, I sort of broached this idea to members of the Teaching and Learning Committee and the superintendent and the board chair um, in advance, just so this wouldn't be kind of a, uh, a blind side. So I'm proposing that we adopt, that the district, Brantford Public Schools, adopt a focus, a future focus, which puts a priority on understanding and protecting the environment. Um, so I'll put that in the form of a motion, and then if we get a second and start the discussion, I, I would like to comment. So if there's a second, uh, so the proposal is for discussion purposes that we adopt as a primary focus, um, understanding and protecting the environment through the dist throughout the district. Well, I'll second it just to, to, to get the discussion going. So this is one of those things that, that really um, is something that I believe we can't wait for. And our children throughout the district um, know and have expressed, and throughout the world actually, globally, a deep, deep sense of urgency about what is happening in the world to our environment. They will um, invariably and certainly be um, confronted with issues that come out of things that are happening around the world um, with respect to our environment whether or not they specialize in environmental studies. And we've seen that in a number of ways. Um, so I want to hasten to add, before we get too deep into this, that I'm not suggesting that we sort of pile on to teachers and say, here's something that you must do. And my premise is, I think teachers finish the school year and think over the summer and pretty much throughout the course of their careers, what can I do to freshen my approach to my subject? And this is an opportunity to provide a, an approach, a focus for 
pretty much every discipline, unless I'm wrong, for every subject area, to use the tools of that subject area and apply it to the world around them, um, and to provide a context for student learning. I, so why wait until college? Um, we have very sophisticated students in Brantford, and, and we've seen across the world how students have stepped up in a very sophisticated and articulate way. And I also think for a district, it's an opportunity for us to show deep respect for student voice, because it's something that they have expressed concern about. I also think it's an opportunity for our board to take the lead on doing, um, on preparing our students to be a step ahead of the game for when they do get to college and beyond, because what we are really talking about their future. Um, so really, this is a sort of ask to the administration to consider the impact of this suggestion, recommendation, proposal, and do what they do so well, which is apply their skills to um, identifying the impact, planning and preparing the kinds of things that need to happen so that this can work if it's something that we agree to move on. Um, and it's also something that I think we might be able to make a focus of our board retreat this summer. Even though I'm impatient, as we all are, about things that happen in school, and, and I'd love to be able to get a jump on this sooner rather than later. So I know that's probably kind of nebulous and unclear sounding, and it's intended to be, because it's something that I think we can shape as a board. And clearly, the administration will be a, a major contributor to. So those are the points I wanted to make about that. And um, let's see where we go. Dawn? So I, I think it's a very worthwhile idea. I'm hesitant to approve it here. Um, I think it's something we need to ferret out before we go to the administration and say, OK, this is what we want you to focus on. I think we need to be less nebulous about what we're talking about. Alan? Yeah, I, I, also, I also agree with Dawn as well as um, we also need to see what's already in the curriculum because there may be some of this that's in okay. the, the science curriculum right yeah. now. So I think, and I, and I also agree with you that I think it should be discussed at a retreat. And I also see this as another way to maybe support the students doing their own thing like happened at the high school, maybe finding a way to support what the kids want to do extracurricular so that we're not, again, like you said, we don't want to burden the teachers with too much. And I, it's, may I, it's also, it's clearly part of my thinking that this would be collaborative across the district. So children at all levels, um, literally at all levels, and teachers and, and administration should have a hand in what this looks like. Um, if it's agreeable, I know, and I hope I'm not speaking out of school here, when I mentioned it to Hamlet, he was pretty excited about it, and he can speak for himself. But, um, uh, yeah, it's something that needs to be shaped in a way that uh, is smart and, and, and meets the needs of our children and, and our district. Well, I mean, I, I'll just, um, I briefly mentioned this to John when um, we had talked, is, is I also think this is, should be something that we need to grasp our hands on. I think it's something good to discuss at a retreat. It could be one of our main topics. See how it, it will give Hamlet a chance to digest it some more, discuss it with his administration team. He's got an, an idea. Um, and then we discuss it further in the retreat and to see how far we're going to go with it. Because as Ellen said, it, some of it might already be built into our, into our, mm -hmm. our curriculum. Yeah, and we do have, well, I think it's AP Environmental Studies, yeah. if I'm not wrong. Well, it, it's, uh, it, well there's, there's a few things. Uh, uh, and first, I, I just want to comment that uh, when John did uh, share with me, um, I do share the enthusiasm about capitalizing on the fact that we are a shoreline town, uh, that we, on the town side, uh, the town has really worked hard from a sustainability perspective, uh, and they have married both the environment as well as a fund uh, based on what is happening with rising tides. And 
as a result of the environment. Mm -hmm. Our town is really cutting edge with that. I do make a distinction in my mind between speed and urgency. Uh, I think that we can still have urgency about vetting this through appropriately and really uh, putting, putting some really concrete things on a concept. And as I look back in just four years ago uh, in instructional coaching, that is something that we are still in its infancy. It is year four. And I think as educators, we need to be mindful that the sense of urgency and speed in public education does not equate to doing something uh, after two or three sessions. But I think if we keep this in the forefront of our minds, between NGSS, the course offerings that we have at the high school, and Project Lead the Way that hopefully we will be implementing at the elementary level, I think we are starting to set conditions where we can seriously contemplate having a district theme. But I do believe that the board uh, having a deep discussion about that at the retreat and thinking about, okay, what are the ramifications of giving that type of a direction and getting input from the senior leadership of the district uh, so that we can con convey the message and solicit input from people that ultimately will be implementing something like this or we're asking them to integrate something like this. I think that's a key process and it's a time consuming process. Um, so I, I just offer that from my perspective, but I, but I do share the excitement that we are well poised for something like that. Uh, and particularly when we think about giving students voice uh, and what does that look like? Anybody else? Yeah. That's? I, I'm, I'm actually glad you brought it up now, John, several months in advance of the retreat so that we can be thinking about it, but also we're saying this out in a public forum. There's an opportunity for um, teachers and students to weigh in now, give us your ideas so we have something to talk about at the retreat. Um, in mulling it over in my own head, I was thinking about the opportunities for us to partner with a business, businesses in town to offer some incentives. You know, maybe we're not directing teachers into put this in your curriculum, but they are already doing it. We're raising trout in one of the schools. We're doing art projects. We're doing all kinds of things. Why not recognize the ones that are, this, the this teachers and the students who are already doing some stuff. So I hope this discussion in April sort of generate some discussion outside of our board before the, the July retreat. Sorry. Um, I also think it, you know, I'm subject to the will of the board. It might not be a bad idea to have one or two experts join us. Um, I th I'm thinking of a couple of people I know that we have our uh, senator is, she may be chair of the Environment Committee, if I'm not wrong. She's clearly in leadership. Um, Christine Cohen, uh, and I'm sure that administration, you know, you're right. So there's time to think about who might be able to contribute to a, to a solid understanding, um, which will just give us a leg up. And we also have the new science people coming on, too, at right. the elementary level. So this may be, you know, the, Tie it all together. the beginnings of the beginnings. So I don't know if, I mean, the motion could either be withdrawn or modified. Um, it sounds like there's commitment so that if I withdraw the motion, I don't think that'll be a hindrance to making progress. Is what it's no, I think we're better off to just withdraw it and then we'll, we'll stay on top of it. Okay. And then I, when I start coordinating the um, board retreat, we're going to have further discussion as a board also what we want to discuss at the retreat. So that will bring it up again. Cool. Okay. All right. All right, so then I second it, so I'll withdraw it as you're withdrawing it. <laughs> and then you mentioned, I don't remember the second word. It was green something. Yeah, it's green something. That's <laughs> pretty accurate. Um, this I'm going to move that the board, the, uh, I'm going to say the board take concrete steps to become car carbon neutral in its use of energy as a um, school district.
and I'll talk about it if there's a second. I'll second it for no. the purpose of discussion. Okay. <laughs> so, and this will require some study and it will require a commitment obviously to the board has capital assets, physical buildings, vehicles, um, physical plants. And I think we should commit to taking concrete steps to ensure that those resources, those assets, are used in the most efficient way that produces the least amount of um, negative impact on the environment. So carbon footprint in terms of vehicles, um, and again, this will require some research in terms of what we have, what it costs to drive all of our trucks and vehicles and cars, um, and, w and what the impact might be to sh switch or shift to other vehicles, electric vehicles, um, whatever is the current um, trend in reducing carbon footprint and, and committing to sustainability. Uh, that would include partnering with local, state, and other town bodies to address those kinds of issues. Um, and again, in particular, as a coastal community with neighboring communities who share our interest, if we start the ball rolling on this, we could make a dent. And we could feel good about doing something rather than doing nothing. And I'm not suggesting necessarily that we're doing nothing, but to actually commit to um, shifting, switching over our vehicles as a concrete step in reducing our use of uh, fossil fuels. So that's my explanation. Dawn? For who, um, how do you envision gathering up all this information? Like who do you, would you see a separate committee to do this? I, I don't see like putting this on Don's shoulders. Um, I mean, it's, it's a great idea, but realistically, how do you see this working out? Yep. Open to suggestions. And I'm sure that to some extent the district captures a fair amount of this information. It might be something that um, I would have to hear from, from staff on what they think, because far be it from me to. I think probably where we'd have to go, because there, there's definitely, there'd be cost implications, there's definitely cost implications. I, my gut's telling me we're doing a lot of stuff mm -hmm. already. Yep. I think what might make sense is uh, doing it in, step, in, in yep. steps in a s slow way is we have, you know, talk to Hamlet about it, and you can chime in if you'd like, is we have a report from maybe Joe of what we're doing with with efficiency. I know he's done different things with the, that big... Uh, yeah, the... The, uh, uh, the, 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 yeah, the, the energy the high school. Yeah, the, the tri-generation right. plant, the uh, relamping of, of lights. I mean, yes. we, we, we done that, the that's under the... the that's under the... Uh, the realm of energy efficiency and trying to gain efficiencies, cost efficiencies. Uh, I believe what you're talking about, John, is really you know, trying to reduce the carbon footprint exactly. of the district. Uh, I'm, if we are, again, I, as a superintendent, I believe that uh, we should be mindful of the things that we are doing, particularly uh, from the perspective of a future look and looking out. Uh, mm -hmm. That does take resources, uh, and most likely we would not be in control of the purse strings. Uh, in other words, anytime that we buy a vehicle, that's we receive our appropriation from the town for capital. Mm -hmm. When we're doing things to buildings, those are all capital-type projects. So I do believe that there's an opportunity in, to engage in a dialogue uh, with the town around is there interest, appetite in doing something like that and where do we start? And I turn to the new intermediate school, right. which will be a high, you know, a, a, a lead type building uh, that already has some designations and that will be uh, really the standard bearer for that. Uh, and when I look at the new firehouse, which is not so new anymore, um, and just some of those, um, I don't believe there is a fueling station there for electric cars. They will be pretty omnipresent in 10 or 15 years. And so we can start doing little things, at least thinking about that. But I, again, we don't have the resources. I don't want to mislead anybody. We're not sitting 
measuring how many miles our vehicles uh, are, are putting on the road. I mean, we, we have an inventory, we maintain our current equipment, but really our approach is one of obsolescence. We purchase it, we maintain it, and at some time it needs to be replaced. That's a different focus to start looking at replacing things with a, reducing the carbon footprint, i.e. bus contract. Um, yeah. If the district is really, and the board is really committed to that, that would significantly impact the budget of our transportation. And that's probably where we can make the biggest inroads. Mm -hmm. But there's an investment, upfront investment. So I mean, I think it's a conversation we should have. And I do think that that would be a perfect um, topic to invite uh, legislative leaders because I think we would look to them for partnering on something like and this. And grants and, and, and dollars exactly. to, to help us with exactly. that. Exactly. And it wouldn't be a bad thing if us taking action, at least expressing a concern officially, would be a motivation to the town to say, we better get on board with something like this too. Mm -hmm. And then other towns to say, they can do it, we can do it, and we could really take the lead in I mean, another idea that I have, which may sound crazy, is to plant trees like crazy and shrubs. They use carbon dioxide. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh, so whatever we can do, we should mm. think about doing, and we should do it in a way that I would yield to uh, administration to say, here's what makes the most sense. Well, and, and I can appreciate that, but we would... The administration would need a little bit more clearer guidance uh, relative, because just to say that we want to reduce the carbon footprint administratively, uh, we don't necessarily have the resident expertise to do that. Um, and certainly we can uh, look at something next year with consultants. And again, I would prefer to have some time to think about that as opposed to I'm speaking openly and freely right now. And it's a brainstorm. It's not. It's not a it's not a deliberate, structured conversation about what are the, what's the vision, what's the mission, what, what are the goals, what are the milestones, what are the conditions that we need to set. This is a free-flowing conversation, and it's a brainstorm. And I think we need to be clear relative to where does the brainstorm turn into an actionable directive by the board that is multi-year, multi-pronged with resources behind that. And I think we can get there. A but I steps. think it's, it, it takes more than just gen, than us having this discussion. But this is a starting point. Yeah. And I think it's also important that be, this is, and it somewhat connects to your previous right. suggestion. So it's something else that we could discuss further in open in our, in our board retreat. And I know Hamlet's already reached out to the state legislators mm -hmm. um, to try, and I mentioned that to you. Um, to try to get them to come to a meeting. We usually try to do that every year or every other year. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while since they've been here, but since it's pretty much, except Sean, it's pretty much new. Um, so it mm -hmm. would be a good idea to have them come. And but, Christine mentioned it. Yeah, so well, we, uh, well, him and I did yeah. once they, yeah. and again, once they were elected, I'm sure they had a lot of things yeah. going on. So uh, we will t do another follow up. I mean, we'll we, follow up and do we another. Did an initial, we did an initial in a, Carrie and I, and, and I had spoken to Mike yep. about that, but frankly, we need to close the loop, and that's more on us than on them. Mm -hmm. And I and I just want to say, I mean, both of the things, uh, the discussion item, uh, f future plans, and this carbon, reducing the carbon footprint, the fact that we're even having the discussion, I think, serves as a model for our students, um, and that's very, very powerful. And I also... Um, I'm, I'm excited about the fact that we're talking about aspirational things. Mm -hmm. uh, remember Celia Tocci when we were doing the, the middle school, the intermediate school? She would constantly remind us to be, be aspirational, be mm -hmm. aspirational. But we need to also be measured. So I think having that discussion in a structured way that leads to something uh, tangible is an important piece. All right, so can we, we'll, if it's okay with John and Betsy, remove the motion, and then we'll bring this up again at the, uh, the retreat. Well, you know what I'd like to maybe do? Because this one 
could be, and again, I'm open to um, input, could be more a, um, a resolution, a board resolution mm -hmm. of the importance of exploring the concept so that at least it's alive on our uh, minutes. Um, you know, result, we resolved to uh, explore the feasibility um, and the possibility of reducing the carbon footprint uh, as, a, as an organization in town, uh, something along those lines, which leaves it open to all of the things that Hamlet just said. Um, do you think there's value, um, John, in, in... I'm sorry? Do you think there's value in uh, crafting something uh, and letting the board uh, massage that and then bringing something to the May board meeting. Yeah, I'm open uh, to that. So that, uh, as opposed to trying to craft something on the spot, yeah. you know, because we're, I suspect that we will all walk away with some thoughts and this, it'll, we'll start to make different connections. That works for me. Um, so, yeah, I'll all withdraw. Right. All right. Betsy, going to withdraw? Sure. That's okay. <laughs> all right. Now, Ellen. Consent agenda, please. Uh, yes, I move that we um, move the second reading uh, forward on uh, the policy of conduct, graduation requirements, and live animals in the classroom. Can I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Great. Thank you, Owen, and thank you for all the work that you are doing on the policy committee. Well, I also have to thank Carrie, Carrie and Rachel, they have, and the rest of the committee. I don't yep. mean to, John, you've been, and, and. Oh, we don't thank John. Forget John. No, 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 we don't forget. Because he's just no, correcting been, all the periods. I have to say, it's been a great committee. So thank you Good. for thanking me. It's all team effort. Team it effort. It is. It is. All right. Now we're back to the second public comments on any of our uh, agenda items. Anybody? No? All right. Um, Tom, you feel like comment? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joanne, the communications committee, please. Um, yeah, we met um, on April 10th. Oh, yeah, it's speaking right into you. We met on April 10th, and Hamlet kind of touched on some of the items. It was an update on the Walsh Intermediate School project, and our next meeting is May 8th, Wednesday, in the Brantford High School. All right. Thank you, Joanne. Thanks. Um, the Personnel and Finance Committee, we canceled that meeting. Yes. And John, Teaching and Learning. Teaching and Learning met, and we had a presentation on, uh, that was the NEASC. Purposeful play. Purposeful, Purposeful play. play. play based learning. My computer froze up on me. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And your next meeting? Is next month, uh, May eighth at <laughs> seven o'clock. <laughs> you too, Ellen. Ah uh, yes, we, the policy committee met um, right before this meeting. We approved two more policies, and our next meeting will be May fifteenth um, at Mary T. Murphy School prior to the board meeting. All right. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, Aces, Ellen. Yes. Um, I went to ACES last week. It was a very nice surprise to see our fellow colleague there, John, as, um, on, uh, in, uh, he was representing CABE. They gave award to ACES on their AV project to show ACES' new mission. Um, they also discussed the Leader Hill project, which the update, so I felt like the night before we had the, um, the, the slides for the Walsh project, and the next day I'm looking at more, more buildings. I mean, I, I could become an architect now. <laughs> um, so that, and um, the Wintergreen Magnet School will be going to the Gateway um, Community College in North Haven, that building. So oh. that's, and they have a campus of, um, there's going to be 540 plus students there. Um, so that was ACES. Great. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, Dawn, BECC? Yes. So they have a very busy month coming up. Um, on Saturday is the Brantford School Readiness Committee talking early childhood. 
and it's a community event for parents, teachers, and caregivers of children five and under and includes free admission, breakfast and lunch, and there's professional development certificates for teachers. The keynote address is from Susan Graham titled, Let's Start the Conversation, Discovering and Communication and Connection, Improving Communications and Communications with Children. Okay, that's a lot. One and one or in a group um, and adults to help adults learn how to communicate and connect with children better and have better relationships. They also have a special guest, Luz Rivera from the Office of Early Childhood's Help Me Grow program, and she'll be talking about the milestones. Um, and the location is the Shoreline Community Church at Nine Business Park Drive and Units 1 and 4. So they are very busy. And you've noticed in town they have all yeah. their pictures up. Yes, we of, have some. Um, yeah, they're doing a great job. Thank you, Dawn. Uh, John, Cabe? So we're processing the uh, annual budget, and also I want to ask folks if they've heard a speaker, a keynote speaker, at any of their conferences that they were especially impressed by, to let me know, because it's a, every year we kind of struggle to find good keynote speakers. Um, we've gotten really lucky, and we've had some that weren't so great. You might want to tap into that little second grader that we had tonight. All right. That's a fun. Wow. That's a great one. <laughs> so yeah, that's for the convention in November, um, and we would appreciate that. So. Thank you, John. Uh, any PTA reports? All right. Thank you, guys. All right. I don't have any other uh, future items. Um, of course, if you guys do, please just email to, email to me. And um, the school year, guys, is moving along. We're already into May. It's hard to believe. I know. <laughs> That's true. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Second. All in favor? Great. Thank you, everybody.